So this, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do an up clock and a down clock uh, for our timer here. You can see I have it set up with a label and a vertical arrangement. One label that will keep track of our down time and a down timer start button. On the next one, I have an up label with a button for to start that timer. Then I have a reset button. Uh, if you're going to notice, I also came down to sensors. I dragged in two clocks as non-visible components. And under user interface, I also brought in a notifier to notify us on screen when our time is up. Now, again, you can uh, take a look and change variables on this design screen, but we're going to jump into the programming. And what I'm going to start with is creating two variables. So the variables that I'm going to create are our clock up, and I'm going to create a clock down. So we're going to store our time as a variable. So I'm going to come to my math block. The up timer, we're going to start at zero, and the down timer, we can stop at or start at five. So because our clocks will begin to tick right away, when the screen is initialized, what I want to do is come to my clock and I want to grab my dark green set block and I want to change it to uh, timer enabled. I'm going to come up to my logic and grab my false block. I'm going to duplicate this. So clocks one and two, when the app starts, will be off. So we're going to make the user start these clocks. So I'm going to go to my clock one and I'm going to grab one my clock timer uh, block. And what this is basically saying is when my uh, clock is started, it will tick away at a 1,000 milliseconds, which is what we set up on the design screen. What do I have, want to have happen? Well, I'm going to set my down clock, grabbing my math block. We want to be able to subtract that variable. So I'm going to get my uh, get variable. I'm going to choose my down, and I'm going to subtract every time the clock ticks. I'm going to take away one second. Now, just because we're counting that variable doesn't mean we're displaying it. So I'm going to go to my down label that I set up. I'm going to say I want my label's text to read whatever my variable is. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to get my get variable, and I want to get my clock down. So now I'm going to display that as a label. So now I need to grab my logic and say, you know what? If my clock reaches, in this case, because we're counting down, if my clock reaches zero, meaning that variable reaches zero, zero so I'm going to get that get down variable. I'm going to set my timer enabled to false. I'm also, because I brought in that notifier, I'm going to call my notifier to show the alert telling the user that the time is up. So I'm going to bring in a text box and say time is up. So the easy thing is I can duplicate this. I can change this to clock two. My down variables become up variables in all of these. And my uh, Up, my label here becomes up. I need to get rid of this subtraction block and bring in an addition block because we're counting up. So I'm just going to substitute those. So what I have now is each of my timers counting, one counting down, one counting up. And I've changed my variables here. Uh, all of this is clock one. Everything here should read clock two. And we should check that our variables uh, all read up on this one. And the same should read down on this one. Now, we have our buttons. We have our down timer. And we have our up timer. So what we want to do is, when the down timer, uh, when the button is clicked, we want the clock one to be enabled to true, meaning we want to start that clock. We're going to duplicate this, and we want the up timer, which is clock two, to be enabled.